All right, perfect. Oh, there we go. All right, as a pre appreciate the introduction from sidelines to superfans and a whole lot of other words after it, but we'll make it quick because we have 23 minutes, so we're going to speed through this lightning round telling you how we're converting you know, non-casual bettors into sports bettors. So, or excuse me, casual fans into sports bettors. Um, on the panel today, we've got Mark Phillip. We've got Josh Gibbs subbing last minute. We really appreciate it. Coming in to, to pinch hit. And we've got Rodney Nupel. Nupel, got it. We're going to give 30 seconds to each of the panelists to introduce themselves and their company, and uh, we'll jump right into it. Greetings, folks. My name is Mark Phillip, uh, Brooklyn native Yankees fan. Uh, I run a company called Metabet. We build uh, interactive tools for sports media properties to earn affiliate revenue from sports books. Our parent company is called Are You Watching This? We're focused on sports excitement analytics. Think, think NFL Red Zone channel, but for everything on TV as an API. Josh? My name's Josh. I'm, I'm English, so I'll be a little bit less uh, salesy. Uh, I run a company called Play.io. Ultimately, the focus is giving the power of data back to the operators, really allowing them and enabling them to gain insights and ultimately offering APIs to ensure actionable insights can be gained. Rodney Newport with Noop Solutions. I'm from the middle of Illinois. Nobody's probably ever heard of it. Um, Noop Solutions is a, a sports, sports betting content agency. Uh, we produce content throughout the internet uh, for affiliates or anyone that needs content. And uh, I've kind of run that up from the last seven years or so. So that's what I do. Thank you. Perfect. Really appreciate it, guys. Uh, my name is Jonathan Sprung. Didn't introduce myself because I'm doing a life sentence in iGaming. Uh, this is my 17th year in the industry. Yes, I am old. Um, but talking about casual sports fans, I've been following sports my entire life, so that does not mean me whatsoever. But this panel with data-driven solutions, it really can hone in on, you know, how do we convert those fans. So, number one, how is our industry really helping to transition, you know, people who are casually watching sports or aware of sports into sports betters? Start with you, Mark. Uh, I wish you didn't start with me because I, I don't have anything nice to say, and mom always you're, told me. You no, know, you're allowed to say, what, as long as it's, I love the New York Yankees, don't say that. Yeah, I mean, I just had my Duncan, so maybe I'm feeling a little rowdy, but uh, we're not doing nearly enough. I mean, and, and it drives me crazy that you can land on a sports book website and it looks like you're looking at an Excel spreadsheet. You know, there's nothing about going to a website or even a sports book in Vegas. One of my favorite places to hang out with a laptop and a drink, and you look at this board and it's just numbers. I mean, raise your hand if you know what the payout is on a minus 350. And so there's so much about our industry, <laughs> Jimmy will know, <laughs> One. Uh, but there's so much about our industry that can be better. There's so much untapped potential where we're focused on, you know, what are the, the tribes in California going to do? What are the, what's the ledge going to do in Texas? But there's so much opportunity already if we can figure out how to really talk to folks in a non-math way. I would sort of agree and disagree at the same time. Ultimately, like, I think we've really seen from, like, Pick'em games and instant play from, like, the likes of DraftKings and other competitors out there that that's what the casual player wants. It makes it so much easier for them to go onto site and just click two buttons. And I think that's... It's, it's taking what you gain from, like, web analytics and everything like that. It's how can we reduce the amount of clicks for anyone? And I think that that's, that's kind of a big thing in the industry right now. Yeah, I'm kind of a mixture of both of them. Like, yes, there's a lot we could do still out there, but, but there are the daily games and the quick, the quick you know, uh, quarter games and things like that that I think are getting the attention of people and, you know, anything out there that can get to quick attention because, you know, they're not going to sit for three hours and watch a game but they might sit for the last 30 minutes of it. So um, I, I do like those aspects of it. And, uh, yes, but Mark hit it right on. Like, there's a lot out there we could still do. So, um, yes, there's some good things, and, yes, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. All right, Mark just skipped right ahead to, like, question four on question one. So <laughs> I'm going to go off the rails right off the top. I want to talk about, you know, pain points, barriers of entry. If you're talking about, hey, it's not set up for a way where somebody can go buy a sports book and go, oh, I understand this. What other barriers of entry are there? What are the pain points for saying, all right, we see these boards, we see these minus numbers, we see plus numbers. What, what is the gap there? Where, what other pain points are we talking about? Because it's not just that one. Sure. I mean, I think if you look at social media in general, you look at Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, threads, if you take the logos off of those sites, take all the colors, all the color palette, make it black and white, you can still look at the site and know which one you're on. But I challenge you to go to any sports book 
remove the logos and the colors and tell them apart. There's nothing interesting about it. Maybe they'll have a single game parlay here or, or something else there. But they're all kind of the same. And I kind of feel like the emperor doesn't have clothes on and just no one's sort of yelling about it more. I, I love what Underdog and Price Picks and those guys are doing. I think it's, you know, they, they've had their wrists slapped here and there. Some, I think, for good, some unfairly. Um, but for me, I think a big aspect is there's just not enough new out there. There's not enough talking to the customer in a way that isn't about, um, you know, doing a, a math problem in your head. We, we talk about the, the, uh, the women demographic, as if we can paint them with just one big brush, uh, 150 million the, people the in this gener- country. The general woman. Yeah, the right? general <laughs> woman. Um, and there's so much nuance there that I think we miss, in that if we're able to stop, um, stop making it a math problem, make it about fun. I mean, make it about the reason why we watch sports in the first place. You know, yelling at the TV and sports gambling is a great accelerant for fandom, but getting people in the door to understand how it works is step one, and sometimes we skip that. And I would also say that this comes down to kind of the acceptance of new forms of technology. So we've, we've talked for about the last four years about the Netflix of, of gambling, but there's been very few that has actually managed to make that work exceptionally well. The dream is ultimately that a player comes on site and sees exactly what they want to see, the same as what you have with an Instagram or a Twitter kind of feed. And that ultimately does come down to companies embracing the data that they've got and, and trying to change and adapt. 76% of players, when they come on site, want to see that basically this is what I want. I don't want to see, as an English person, I don't want to see like tons of golf because I'm never going to, I don't bet on golf. But I, all I want to see is maybe Arsenal because that's what I want. So I think the, the factor is it's kind of that personalization. That's how you kind of drive it, in my opinion, how towards you can get to an Instagram or social media sort of style. They pay so much on data, and, and I think that, that's a big factor here. Yeah, and I think with new betters, like, I'm going to kind of go a different direction. Like, how do, you, how do you get money in? How do you get money out? I mean, they have no idea. They have no idea. So making that process easier. Now, I don't have the, I don't have the full f- proof solution on how to make that easier, but I think making that process easier is going to obviously help attract more uh, casual betters because they're, they're looking at that and they're like, I don't have any idea how to, how to do this. I, and they just say, forget it. I'm not, I'm not interested in this. So being able to find a way to easier get in, get it out, I, I think would certainly attract the, the casual betters even more. Yeah, we were expecting you to have a solution ready right now. Yeah, if you don't I mean, have one, I think the whole point of this panel is... Moving. Yeah, just like you just leave. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, so I wanted to get into something that you mentioned is, is customization. Yeah. It's having... When you go to like an ESPN app, like not, not ESPN bet, I'm talking about the ESPN app, it says, what's your favorite team? When you put that in, yeah. all of a sudden your top scores on the homepage are the teams you like. Why has no sports book figured that out? Why has no DFS said, okay, you like the Celtics, you like the Yankees, gross. Uh, why don't we serve those up to you on your homepage? That, that's your yeah. first bet. Because, yeah, because you know, you know the casual fan is going for that team. I Correct. Mean, they, they I don't, don't want to have to search. Why am I searching yeah. to say, I'd like to bet this game? It's not, there's no brainwaves that say, yeah. okay, put it at the top. There's got to be some kind of data input. Yeah, to, if they're a Celtics fan, they're not. They don't care what the Kings-Pelicans line is and all those others. They want the Celtics. They want all the Celtics. They want the, the Tatum props. They want the, the total. They want everything. So I agree with you. Like, why hasn't that been done? doesn't seem like it would be terribly difficult. So I agree with you. That's good. I, I think just to add to that, obviously playing more the B2B card, it's, I think the U.S. has evolved at such a rapid pace that everyone's been just desperately trying to catch up. I mean, I think now we're getting to a stage where the market, new markets have sort of slowed, and that allows companies to kind of double down and really focus on that personalization. I think before, everyone is focused on New Jersey, Ohio, everywhere, and with new markets came new regulations, new difficulties, new intricacies within that, and I think now we can finally start to go, okay, how can we look inwards and and really improve that player experience? Is it done yet? Not perfectly, but there are companies out there that are trying to make this happen. It's not a simple solution, but it's definitely possible. I think it's important to... When I open up Instagram and I scroll through my feed, it is uh, pet memes, uh, DIY stuff, and sports highlights. But I didn't check those boxes in the app. I never said, show me those things. It just learns and evolves over time. I think any sports app 
that says, hey, choose your teams and we'll customize from there, I think is already lost. Because fandom isn't binary. I love the Yankees. I identify as a Yankees fan. I would never click the Golden State Warriors checkbox or the Lakers checkbox. But if they're on TV, I'm going to watch. And so remembering that there's a fingerprint to fandom and that it's not binary, I think is one of the sticking points. And so I think there's some that are doing it, like ESPN, absolutely. But I think what these sports books and even the sports media properties do as well is start to glean in the same way when you go to TikTok. Well, I'm too old to go to TikTok, but <laughs> you're not choosing what you want to see. You just get a feed because it understands what you're engaging with. And we need to take that sort of intelligent tech and really roll it into our experiences. So do you think that's where the industry is going next is data, potential AI to realize, you know, like you said, if they're only betting on games that are on TNT, Serve, serve them games that are quote unquote national games because if you're a casual watcher of sports you go oh there's a game on ESPN maybe I'm not a fan but I'm going to watch it anyways absolutely I mean maybe some people just watch TV on Tuesdays because that's the only time the kids go down early maybe they just watch games on TNT because they have a password from a buddy of theirs so they can watch TNT online like picking up on those things don't make me pick the Tuesday night's good for me a TNT checkbox because those don't exist but those are the type of things I think if we pick up on we can really bring in those, what do we call them? Sidelines? Sidelines, Side super, super fans, sidelines, super fans. Yeah, it's exactly. I think that's how we find them. Yeah. yeah, understood. Anybody else? I mean, selfishly, obviously, I hope that AI continues to grow, and it will. Um, but ultimately, that is the way it's going. I think we've already seen from e-com players, such as Fanatics, they're sitting on so much data. I'm just excited to see when they start to leverage their player base. They know almost every single player that's come in to their site and what their favorite team, because they'll know what jersey they bought, right? I think this is happening, and I think you've already seen the likes of BetMGM with the rewards programs, with, with, with sort of the email lists and everything. I think we're starting to see companies go outside of where they are towards more of a, an intricate sort of data map of, of a player. And I think it's going to take time for them to kind of change data structures, make it work, but ultimately it's all possible. It's just having that ambition and understanding that it, it, it won't happen overnight. It's, it's a, a true trajectory and, and a goal and strategic initiative that needs to come from the top, really. Yep. I, I appreciate you getting us back on track because that actually was the next question <laughs> about bridging the gap with new brands such as ESPN joining uh, with the ESPN bet, or real you know, smart name they chose there, um, and Fanatics as well joining, mm -hmm. joining the fray. So how are those existing sports entities, existing sports brands bridging the gap, like you said, with the data they already possess just, you know, are they just taking tech and going, all right, slap the brand on it, and that's the end? Or is this truly a transition from brand to actually understanding the audience that they came in with? I mean, I think you've already seen it with, with how they kind of came to market in New Jersey, right? They didn't, they didn't just slap a, here's $500 new, new deposit match bonus. They tried to kind of, they, they were implicated, but it, they, they did try and say, if you buy something on our site, Here's sort of 25, I think it was $100 on, on, on sort of site as well. I think you've started to see people trial. Now, again, it, there's this balance as well. Obviously, investors versus profits for immediate profits versus sort of longer term profits. But I think you are starting to see companies utilize what they've got. And I think Fanatics is really hope that they do keep down this path. It's a long path. It's not going to be easy, but I hope, really hope that they keep going. I'm good. No, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Nothing nice to say. I think you nailed it. Wow. Oh, we're, we're just going to let them take <laughs> the nap. Nobody I'll else is going <laughs> on. Anybody else? ESPN fags? Anyone? Download? No? I like, want them, no, we're not I want them to be a customer at some point, so I'm, I'm not going to say everything I think. I'm, I was hoping somebody was going to say something controversial on this panel. It's, no? it's, it's rinse and repeat. I mean, yeah. I, it, there's nothing interesting about ESPN bet. There's <laughs> so right. much opportunity there. Is, is it because... It's an existing property. It's not new tech. They're not going, oh, let's buy a new tech stack. It's an existing product. It's literally part two. They did not build it from scratch. Correct. And so I, I can't say that they've launched a bad product. They're taking what they have, and it's a marketing deal. It is not ESPN and Disney and their massive tech team building something from zero. So it is what it is. But it's still frustrating. It, it's still disappointing to see... You know, I'm still hurt about Foxbet not working. I thought Foxbet was going to go like gangbusters. That didn't work either. So sometimes stuff just doesn't work. If you made me pick three, four years ago, I wouldn't have picked DraftKings and FanDuel as one and one A. I never would have picked those two, but that's kind of where we are. Yeah. And are, are you, I mean, obviously money plays a huge part in this, but are you surprised a company like 
Fox just said, all right, we're out. Like, the, as, as quickly as they did, where we're live in a little over half the states in, in the U.S., so we're not even close to a, a, a full market experience. Are you surprised they went, yeah, you know, we're not, we're not. Or are they potentially going to jump in later when they go, okay, it's a mature market, maybe we will try again. On paper, it should have worked because Skybet took over the world and they nailed it. And Fox just said, okay, let's just do that in the U.S. If I was him, I would have done the same thing and I would have been loud wrong. It just didn't take. And lots of different reasons, reasons for it, whether you want to talk about how they marketed it, if you want to talk about their back end, their affiliate stuff, there's lots of different reasons from, uh, you know, in hindsight. But on paper, that was the one that I, I voted on or I expected to win because they had the playbook. It wasn't just let's put numbers on the screen. They had interesting products. So I don't want to, you know, cr <laughs> criticize myself after saying we need new and innovative things when the new and innovative things don't make it. But I think that's the direction that we have to go if folks really want to differentiate and unseat the one in the 1A. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, mature market and they came back into it. But, I mean, obviously going to have to learn from their mistakes or their, their downfalls the first time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a question I've had is are, are we going to see the return of Fox bet, you know, with a mature market? Uh, obviously yet to be seen. But uh, I, I do think that's still out there as a, in, in the playbook. I think what a lot of people forget is how much time Skybet kind of took to yeah. work. It, it wasn't an overnight success. I mean, everyone talks about Bet365 for generations. They still do. Um, and I think that the problem was when Foxbet, in my opinion anyway, when Foxbet first came out is it was an investor-led world at that point in time. Everyone chucked money in and, and hoped for, for kind of that sort of rate of return. And, and it takes time. I think they could come back, but... Going back to ESPN, I mean, I was, look, like, I was sort of, I think it's that omni-channel version that's just not, I was quite upset that it hadn't done. I heard, like, there was rumors about it's taking, like, 12 different clicks to find a mention of ESPN Bet on ESPN's app. And I think this is what Skybet does so well that's different to a lot of them is everything just is seamless. Yeah. On site, on TV, it's proper omni-channel. I think that hasn't been done I think DraftKings and, and FanDuel have done that quite well. Um, and, and you never know with, with sort of other products, but I think it can work and it will work. It just maybe will take some more time and learnings from, from sort of everyone out there. So it sounds like you're looking more for ESPN that presented by ESPN as opposed to Penn Gaming presented by ESPN? I, I think that's the, biggest, that's the biggest thing. Is I think that's what's really come back. I mean, you see so many reviews out there of like, even on Twitter, everyone's just a little bit upset with how, how they kind of launched it. Now, I want to give ESPN the benefit of the doubt. I know from previous experience how long it takes to develop a new product. So I don't know their roadmap, and potentially they could be working on something. They, they invested a lot of money, so they needed to get something. Um, but I'd, I'd love to actually have the, <laughs> the CEO of, ESP, of ESPN bet here to actually confirm that. And let's be fair. I mean, we keep saying ESPN. It, it's, it's, it's a marketing deal. Yep. It, it, is a, it is a pen product, and they're... They have their own whiplash, and they've been dealing with their own stuff, so I get it, but um, I'm bullish on them. Mm -hmm. I think they'll get there. All right, I want, I want to get out of bashing Penn, because yeah, we all, <laughs> if any of us ever need jobs at Penn, we are Please. screwed at this point. <laughs> I want to get into the topic everybody here is pining for and excited about. It's Taylor Swift, right? We're talking about casual to super fan, and what you know, garnered more attention this NFL season. You could not turn on Sunday football without hearing some mention of Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking truly about casuals who watch maybe sports for the first, second, third time, being brought in by a global superstar, how can we harness that you know, energy and that excitement around sports and make those into potential betters? Well, I mean, I think they, they did a lot of that during the, the postseason Super Bowl with the, with the various prop bets, you know, with her song names. I don't even know the song names. I don't like, follow Taylor First off, that's a lie. I, I don't know. That's I, a lie. <laughs> even my 10-year-old even my daughter doesn't even follow. So, yeah, but, I mean, I think they, well, 21 or whatever. I mean, they had all sorts See? of, all sorts of those, and I think that continues. Like, you find the next, you know, superstar that's out there, and you, you continue putting those together. I, I thought... I thought they did a pretty good job of putting all the different prop bets together. and It got all sorts of attention from the sidelines to super fans. It became super fans. So um, just continuing to do what, what I, I thought they did a really good job of at the end of last year, F football season. I, th I think you can also say, like, listening to sort of, as we talked about many a times, like listening to social media of, like, Twitter and everything like that, 
I think this is where the industry needs to go. Um, it's kind of like listening internally and, and to everything out there, not just your transactional database, but what is actually in buzz right now. Um, because I think you can really, with, with all these different sort of sportsbook providers, you can really start to go, well, this is popping off. Let's just put, up a, uh, let's just put, it, put this up. Whether it takes any bets or not, it should still pick up some traffic. And you've seen that through affiliate links, through sort of other sources. And it starts to sort of barrel roll into getting them from these bets into a 1x2, into handicap, and then into parlays. Like, ultimately, that's the way things work. And I think there's been so many companies out there that has done it quite well, I think, with Taylor Swift specifically. I think you can draw a direct line between the ratings for the Super Bowl hitting over 120 million, the highest it's ever been, and Nevada seeing 185 million in, in handle, the highest it's ever been. If you get people to tune in, we can debate between bet and watch and watch and bet, whichever one you want to do first, but they're symbiotic. If you give people a reason to watch, then they will bet. And there's nothing on TV like sports. It's the only DVR resistant genre left on TV. And you look at all the highest ratings, it's all sports. And so the opportunity's there. We just have to build the hook, the step, the bridge. Ooh, bridge, that's a good pun. <laughs> Taylor built the bridge from the sports to a reason to bet. If Kelsey had a different game, the books would have lost their shirt. But it's because people cared about it. They gave, she gave them a reason to care about a player and a reason to, pl reason to place the bet. If you give me, if you give me a parlay for people that went to my alma mater, I'm going to bet on that right away. But if you pick some random player, I'm not going to have a reason to bet on it. So getting that hook and pulling people in, they're there. We just have to help them get there. I, I don't think we can end on a more, you know, perfect ending, right? Love it. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a Taylorific ending to this panel. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, my panelists, Mark, Josh, Rodney. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.